Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you are all having a great day to start things off. It looks like Bitcoin could soon be having a, a upcoming soft fork. Prolific Bitcoin developer Peter Woolley unveiled two Bitcoin improvement proposals or BIPs just the other day that offer plans that could prove foundational to a possible upgrade to the cryptocurrency. The two proposals announced on the Bitcoin developer email list describe Taproot, a code change designed to increase Bitcoin's privacy. Taproot is expected to be bundled together with an upgrade called Schnorr in a soft fork that developers have been looking into for a very long time, paving the way for privacy and scalability improvements to Bitcoin. Developers have been long thinking about how to arrange this particular upgrade. There have been a number of proposed changes to Bitcoin over the years, and as they were all related, it makes sense to implement them together. That includes Merkelized Abstract Syntax Trees, or MAST, adding improved Bitcoin smart contracts, Schnorr signatures, which adds another way to sign Bitcoin transactions, and Taproot, which adds even more or better privacy. This pair of Taproot proposals available on GitHub is one of the is one more signal the pieces for such a transition are finally starting to come together. They've been talking about this for a very long time. If you if you think that it takes a long time to actually have Ethereum's upgrades, you haven't heard anything yet. It's important that these technical details are now public because more developers in the community can look at them and see if they agree with the changes. If the community agrees, these changes are the right ones to make. Then the change can finally go live after being put together over several years. Notably, some think this will be less controversial than Bitcoin's last soft fork, known as SegWit. Bitcoin Cash developers, those who split off from Bitcoin because they didn't agree with SegWit, actually really like Schnorr. In fact, they're implementing similar technology in a little over a week. The people usually ask why it takes a very long time to implement things on Bitcoin. It comes down to money and Bitcoin. Uh, pretty much Bitcoin has solidified its place in the first spot on CoinMarketCap, LiveCoin, watch wherever you get your cryptocurrency, wherever from. People know the name Bitcoin and to implement any type of a fork and upgrade and update anything on the actual network that could potentially have a bug in it uh, that could then see the demise of a $100 billion protocol is not something that they want to happen. So whenever something gets proposed for Bitcoin, it takes a very long time. I assume they probably have hundreds of people, that's not even a joke, who are probably looking through the code diligently trying to make sure that everything is okay. And this is why you have to ask the community, is this okay? You think it's okay that we go forward with this? And this is kind of how things go on. Like I think Ethereum also has um, Ethereum improvement protocols, EIPs. I think they're in like the, I can't remember even what number they're on, uh, but the Bitcoin improvement proposals, there are a lot fewer of them. I think they're like, 33, 34, 35, like there, there's not a huge amount of them because you have to realistically be very careful with whatever you implement on the network. It may have a negative effect on something else. So this takes a very long time. Uh, the, uh, the eventual plan for Bitcoin is to have um, a completely private blockchain. That is to say, uh, people won't know who you're paying, where you're paying, where the money's coming from, how you're getting your money. I expect this is a couple of years off, not the, not the initiation of um, Taproot or Schnorr, I hope or would like to see realistically sometime in 2020, hopefully the middle of 2020, to have that implemented around the same exact time as the Bitcoin reward getting cut in half. That would be great. I am I, not expecting a, a 2019 release, uh, but it's expected that within the next five years, some type of a proposal will come to fruition or something will be implemented on top of the Bitcoin blockchain that will allow for completely private transactions. Uh, the future looks very interesting. And yeah. Let's move on. Actually, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Here's the actual email for the Taproot proposal right here. And here's the actual uh, Taproot BIP on GitHub. Yeah, now we can move on. <laughs> so there's a, there's a, I mean, there's a lot happening with Facebook and the Facebook coin. Uh, this part of the video will get very Facebook heavy, uh, but it does make a lot of sense for those of you who are interested in hearing about the future of digital payments. It's not all negative. It actually is something quite interesting. Uh, the founder of the MIT Crypto Economics Lab is reportedly working for Facebook to develop a cryptocurrency. The new crypto has the potential to reach Facebook's uh, 2.5 billion plus monthly active users. That's insane. Christian Catalini launched MIT's Crypto Lab in 2017 of September. Coindesk reported that he is on leave from MIT and is currently working on Facebook's new project to help people transfer value on the internet. According to the website, 
He has presented his research in, at a variety of institutions, including Harvard, MIT, Yale, London Business School, NYU, UC Berkeley, Stanford University, uh, and then it kind of goes on to the U.S. Treasury, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, the, the CFTC, the World Bank, and the White House. So he is uh, fairly uh, important when it comes to uh, the cryptocurrency space or just uh, the future of digital payments. A professor at MIT Sloan School of Management for over six years, Catalini oversaw the MIT Bitcoin experiment that started in 2014. This is actually incredibly interesting. At the time, any crypto curious freshman at MIT that signed up as a participant was given one whole Bitcoin for free. At the time, Bitcoin was worth $100. The experiment, launched by students Dan Eltzer and Jeremy Rubin, allowed them to work with Catalini at a, and a team of researchers to study the network effects of the tech-savvy undergrads without reading through the entire thing. What ended up happening was that they gave access to 4,400 um, freshmen. Only 3,100 joined. Can you imagine? Anyway, I'll, I'll get into that after. Uh, what ended up happening was that they, they, they wanted to do an experiment to see exactly how many people would use Bitcoin, how many people would keep their Bitcoin, and exactly um, what factors led people to either hold it or to get rid of it. And they found out that when they were actually starting to send the Bitcoin to certain people, they made sure <coughs> that half the students got their Bitcoin early. These students were kind of like a... Uh, they, they, they formed their only... like They formed a club within themselves without actually formally forming a club if that makes any sense the other half who were supposed to, to actually get their you know the bitcoin at the exact same time they delayed giving them their bitcoin by several weeks and what actually ended up happening was is that when these people got their bitcoin later the people who got them later they actually ended up selling off their bitcoin almost immediately or just got rid of it within the next couple of weeks because they for some reason didn't identify with the first group of people who had actually gotten their um Bitcoin. Yeah, that's the easiest way of kind of saying it. They were they, they were trying to figure out why people sell and why people buy. And it appeared that the people who were um, natural early adopters actually formed these little, not even like real clubs. They just kind of clustered together as like a, it was more of like an elitist thing. Like I have this and you don't. And when the other people got it, for some reason, they ended up selling them off. So he apparently this guy is now working for Facebook for their cryptocurrency thing. And this, like all the news stories kind of completely tie together because I still think... Or rather, no, 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 no. We had news a couple of weeks ago from the Facebook people uh, that apparently is going to be not launching within the next couple of weeks. I don't know an exact time frame, but I think they said within quarter two. And quarter two ends, I think, June, somewhere around there. So uh, this should be happening relatively soon. And this is why I think we're receiving an avalanche of cryptocurrency Facebook-related news over the last couple of weeks, week and a half, day, weeks. On top of that as well, there was a brand new Wall Street Journal story that follows previous reports centered on the social media giant secretive project and mentions even more concrete plans. Notably, the story mentions that the crypto project is codenamed the Libra Project, while Facebook has recently acquired the rights to the Libra trademark. Specifically, the publication argues that Facebook is planning to launch a cryptocurrency-based in-house payment system and is in talks with financial firms, applications, and e-commerce merchants. We heard the other day that they were actually in talks or probably already have partnered in some sort of way with Visa and MasterCard. Not exactly sure how deep that's going to go, but it's kind of weird. The social media platform has reportedly approached them to offer its token as a way to conduct online payments as well as to seek financial investment. Thus, the Wall Street Journal writes, Facebook aims to burrow more deeply into the lives of its users, with a new system following the moves of Apple and Amazon, which have recently unveiled major financial products of their own. Notably, the in-house payment system might be performed via a Facebook user's profile. The social media platform is purportedly developing a type of checkout option that could be conventionally used on other websites, similar to how a Facebook profile can be logged into many platforms without having to sign in. I hate that so much. I know I'm not the only one. Whenever I, I try to go into an app or something, when they ask you to sign it through your Facebook, it's like, why would I want to sign into my Facebook on this app kind of makes no sense furthermore the social media behemoth may start paying its users with facebook coin the unconfirmed name of the token for viewing ads shopping on facebook or interacting with other content so uh, the the part that i find the most interesting here is that they're pro i mean I, I don't know how realistic or how quick this is actually going to happen i've noticed a a surge in the amount of people who are using like apple pay and all these other things over the last like year a couple of not, not even a couple of years for some reason apple pay kind of like sticks out a bit more i have a couple of friends they, they try to pay for things in apple pay and i kind of give them that look like just 
pay the person in cash. Uh, I have a feeling that Facebook is going to try and encompass all of this and maybe even try to find a way to get rid of, not get rid of, but uh, have Amazon and Apple Pay you lose a lot of their market share. Uh, so once again, continuing on because it does get a little more, more interesting. Uh, many investors and analysts alike have been closely watching to see how much interest institutional investors and corporations express in the nascent technologies, that is cryptocurrencies, and social media giants Facebook's recent foray into the markets is likely a beacon of what is to come next. In a recent interview with Bloomberg, Spencer Bogart, a partner at Blockchain Capital, explained that he believes that the company has lit a fire beneath the crypto markets that will ultimately propel them even higher. During the interview, Bogart nerded, n- noted... <laughs> Bogart nerded. Bogart, <coughs> oh my gosh, I'm ridiculous. Bogart noted that he believes that the cryptocurrency launched by the company will act as a gateway that allows the general public to garner a greater understanding of the technology, making them more comfortable with both using and owning other cryptos. He said, it's like being on the internet so someone can spin out and they can make start making their own Bitcoin. They can start their own Ether. Some percent of the user base is likely to do so. And again, I think that's going to be a dramatic catalyst. Bogart explained, further adding that Bitcoin has gone from zero users 10 years ago to somewhere between 30 to 100 million people on this planet who are using it. And Facebook has billions of users. At the moment, details surrounding Facebook's cryptocurrency remain scarce, but a Wall Street Journal report from the earlier this month gave details about the project. Noting that the company is currently in talks with applications and e-commerce companies that accept the crypto as a method of payment. And then we just spoke about that over here. This is something that I believe could be, and I'm, I haven't really gone through it in my head if this would be plausible. I know that the introduction of a cryptocurrency from Facebook on multiple different platforms would make people more comfortable with it, but I don't know exactly if it would cause an enormous amount of people to actually get into the decentralized cryptocurrency space. I think, it, I mean, I could kind of see something like this. This ties in once again to the next story that we're going to be talking about because I believe as much as we don't want a Facebook coin, it is going to happen. But I think if everything kind of pans out correctly, we could see a situation where people know that they're using cryptocurrency. They associate it with Bitcoin and some type of area in between, they end up acquiring more. And this once again ties into the story that we're about to talk about right now. Like I said, everything is very Facebooky right now. Ads pertaining to blockchain tech, industry news, as well as events and educational materials for cryptocurrencies can now be displayed on Facebook without prior approval. The social media giant announced a development on Facebook business yesterday. This marks a change from last year when Facebook, Google, I think it was Amazon, Yahoo, and a couple of other places implemented a policy that requires crypto and blockchain promoters to get prior consent before they could run advertisements. I think they also banned anything that had to do with a crypto advertisement on their platform as well. Like it was a complete thing. And this is why I believed during 2018 that a lot of this was very coordinated uh, because we had a, a period during the beginning of 2018. It was about an eight, nine, 10 week period where all these countries once a week, it was around a Wednesday. It was very odd. They kept on coming out with information that they were either going to ban cryptocurrencies, get rid of cryptocurrencies. They didn't like cryptocurrencies. It, it, it was always something very negative. And at the same exact time, we had Google, we had Amazon, we had Yahoo, we had Facebook. Uh, I think we had the Chinese government and some other major platform all announced that they were also banning anything cryptocurrency related that had to do with advertising for other people. And I think this is ma- me, myself, majorly what caused the crash in the cryptocurrency market. I don't think we should have. Anyway, I have my own opinions on it. I think a lot of this was coordinated. It could, allegedly, I don't know. It would make a lot of sense if Facebook had been planning this for the past two years that we had information on to them get to get into the cryptocurrency space, that them banning ads thus far for other cryptocurrencies made a lot of sense for their platform so that when they do introduce their own cryptocurrency, and lo and behold, yesterday they also reapproved or you're now allowed to put cryptocurrency ads once again up on their platform. They're probably doing it because they're probably going to advertise for their own cryptocurrency. And other people will be like, hey, why can you advertise yours already on your platform as opposed to other people being able to do so? So this is why, once again, the time frame kind of fits, at least for me, why I think if they did this yesterday, they're allowing ads once again, uh, that they're probably going to eventually allow other cryptocurrency ads. Or rather, they are. Uh, I'll keep reading and then I'll kind of bring it all together. It says this marks a change from last year, so and so. But yeah, when Facebook but policy, the press, right. So the press release goes on to specify that this change will not apply to advertisements that seek to promote a particular cryptocurrency 
or ads for ICOs, they also remain forbidden. The stated propose of such restrictions is to prevent Facebook users from falling prey to misleading advertisements, which is a problem that we had very largely in 2017. A lot of people got scammed very, very easily. Had a lot of friends who didn't understand uh, that they should have just been looking at the top trend cryptocurrencies, right? If you don't even understand it, just get into Bitcoin. They were buying coins you've never even, I mean, just ridiculous things. And then they were losing tens of thousands of dollars as the weeks were going on. It was really insane. Advertisers who wish to promote a specific product, such as a particular cryptocurrency, a cryptocurrency exchange, or mining software and hardware will have to undergo a rigorous background screening, which includes the following. They need a license that they have obtained, whether they are traded on a public stock exchange or a subsidiary of a public company and other relevant public backgrounds on their business. So, end quote, I assume within the next couple of weeks, months, we will see Binance, we will see Gemini, we will see Coinbase, maybe Bitfinex, maybe Bittrex, uh, maybe Kraken, maybe Poloniex uh, start popping up on Facebook. These are very well-known places. I wouldn't be surprised at all if you start seeing... New York Stock Exchange, Fidelity, or NASDAQ things popping up on your thing as well as far as like getting into cryptocurrencies. This is what I was talking about why it could be potentially positive for people on the platform. As people get more comfortable with using digital currencies, I think eventually, especially if you're, I mean, if you've been on Facebook, you kind of get bombarded with everything that's, that's kind of going on on there. It could make people a lot more comfortable in seeing this as well. Hey, I remember hearing about Facebook. Hey, I remember hearing about so-and-so. Well, there's this thing on the side I'm going to click on it so I can also start trading Bitcoin which isn't necessarily a bad thing because if they do do a rigorous screening for people who are going to actually be on their platform, uh, at least they'd be going to places that are relatively trusted, like Binance, like Coinbase, uh, like Kraken, like Fourth Name, uh, as opposed to just random. Because I, it, was, it, was, it was a really crazy time. Uh, and I... It's just how life is. There are always going to be scams all over the place, uh, but uh, to kind of bring the Facebook thing home, uh, I don't think it will be as negative as everyone is thinking. I think Facebook coin will take over a large portion of the world. It is a stable coin, uh, and I expect I'm, I want to see if there's going to, no, I, I doubt it. If, I don't think Facebook is crazy enough to actually make a cryptocurrency exchange, that would be massive imagine being able to tell 2.5 billion people hey we have a cryptocurrency exchange you can trade on it with facebook coin i think that would be great for cryptocurrency prices i don't think facebook is crazy enough to do something like that eventually but i wouldn't rule out the future integration of other cryptocurrencies onto their platform as a payment option i assume you're going to have to go through an enormous amount of aml kyc stuff uh, but at least this would also help to increase adoption. So I, I don't think it's all bad. I haven't figured out how much of it is going to be really good. But like I said, uh, we will have to live with this coin. And yeah, let's move on. To kind of finish things up, a major, a group of major cryptocurrency traders is considering the idea of creating a blacklist of counterparties engaged in nefarious activities in the cryptocurrency space. This was reported by Bloomberg. At a, me at, a meeting, me at a meeting in Chicago on Tuesday, a group of traders from 35 digital asset firms, including such industry players as DRW Holdings, Cumberland Crypto Unit, Mike Novogratz's Galaxy Digital Holdings, and tech startup Ripple, proposed to create a blacklist for parties who re reneged on trades and engaged in dubious activities, P pretty much for people. Uh, what we had in 2018, towards the beginning of it, when the hope was still there then that the market was going to go back up. We had people calling for a $50,000 Bitcoin in 2018, if you can believe that. Uh, we had a lot of scams that were kind of floating all over the place. And there were many. There was one in Japan that got made. And there were two in New York that got made. Uh, it was pretty much a, a self-governing type of thing where pretty much as opposed to governments, the SEC and the CFTC kind of coming in and saying, hey, hey, shut all this down. None of this is correct. Destroy all of it. We would have people within the cryptocurrency space who understand cryptocurrencies a bit more, who would be able to differentiate between what's a scam and what's not a scam to kind of rule over, not rule over the space, that's a very strong word, to kind of be able to say uh, what's a scam, what has scammed other people, and then kind of relay that information back to the SEC or the CFTC without the CFTC or the SEC kind of uh, 
bombarding or doing whatever they kind of wanted. So this is kind of the idea behind it, but it appears that this is more of a a concrete one because what we're also seeing right now, I don't know how long this is going to last, and I, and I mean that honestly. Uh, we're seeing like more countries starting to blacklist addresses when it comes to cryptocurrencies. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but it kind of does. Um, you can trace cri most cryptocurrencies transactions through the blockchain. You can see exactly which other addresses they went through. So we have a situation right now where people are, this is why uh, we we're, we're talking about the actual privacy for Bitcoin and being able to buy and sell what you want or, you know, get any coin that you want. Because in the cryptocurrency space, especially in the Bitcoin space, not all coins are equal. If you have a coin that was associated with or has a former address of something that was scammed, something that came out of North Korea or any other country that the United States does not care for, your coin, and not even joking, is seen as dirty. And they, we have things called coin joins where people like mix up the coins. It's, it's, it's very, uh, the cryptocurrency space is kind of odd. So in their own way, they're trying to create like a self-governing type thing where they can kind of make a list of people or entities or corporations or whatever, blah, 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 who have done or robbed or frauded or scammed other people and kind of try to keep them out of this space. Like I said, I don't know exactly how long this is going to go on or how deep this will actually go, but good for them. Some reportedly suggested to create an, an accreditation for companies as approved by the Association of Crypto-Related Businesses, known as the Crypto OTC Roundtable Asia, or Quora. Darius Sit, a Singapore-based managing partner at crypto trading firm QCP Capital, reportedly argued that a community-wide effort to improve compliance standards would prevent liabilities that might stem from trading with bad actors or dealers that trade with bad actors, a self-governance initiative like this is also something that regulators are keen to see. That kind of is really what it comes down to. Regulators are not regulating because they don't know how to regulate because they still have no idea what cryptocurrencies are. I assume at this point they are never going to try and figure out exactly what cryptocurrencies are. And this is why I think these other companies are kind of stepping up. I don't explicitly care for regulations. I don't explicitly care for telling other people what they can and cannot do with their own money or with a, a blockchain, a cryptocurrency. However, on the other side, there are a lot of people who are robbing people, stealing people, hacking people. I th There's no way to stop it, but at least if we can figure out a way to put a cap on it, to kind of slow it down, to uh, provide... I, I don't like the word transparency in this situation, but you kind of understand what I'm saying. Uh, if scams are going to happen, we have to figure out a way to stop them. And I would much rather have people who are already in the cryptocurrency space uh, try to figure out a way to stop the trading with bad actors or other scams and with ICOs or STOs, whatever else is going to come out there. So it does make sense. Um, I worry about a not a centralized approach, but I'm more of like a people sitting on a throne and they're kind of saying what is or what is not acceptable. I think anything that they kind of do that is like them, these people right here, that doesn't sit well with the cryptocurrency community, they'll be called out immediately. This is why the cryptocurrency community is amazing because they figure out if something that's going on wrong immediately and they kind of call them out. Uh, so hopefully this goes well. I, it's like I said, I would rather have this than governments uh, kind of treading on our space. Is, is that a phrase? Uh, I'd rather have people in the cryptocurrency space who know what crypto is, at least to kind of keep everything or try to keep everything in check. Uh, I think that's definitely going to do it for this video. Still in the red for all the altcoins. Bitcoin seems to be doing relatively okay. I, it would be nice if we can pass by 6,100 today. I hopes. Don't know if it's going to happen. Would be nice. I wouldn't complain. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. They are... Professor Wally from Gunbot University, SC Versley, Fine Art, Crypto and Beer, Shipmate, Brady Neals, L Doug, Jared Schneider, Why Is That Owl, Shaolin Fried Rice, Gilbo is Nate, Crypto Joe, Mohair Maroney, Carl Burchinoff, Singer Songwriter, Mike Savitz, Rai Rai, Yasha Harari, Amy Starshing, Jeffrey Ramsey, Cryptnotic, Clara T. Snowden, Crypto Artist, Cold D3D, Nicholas Wonners, One Piece, One Love, Setsuna, Nick Kanaya, Richie Rich III, RF Dusty, Cody, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Jeremy Fox, Jim Gardner, Minting Coins, Arthur Yaku, Nick Mondelevoti, and Anthony Charles. I did it in two breaths. Getting better. Thank you all once again for watching and listening. I hope you have.